black over there, I sit down and say nothing. <coughs> All your eyes will be looking intently on me and say, Father, what's going on? After three weeks of mission, don't you know you're supposed to give a homily and not the time to sit down? And then as you all look upon me at that seat, I look up and I say, today gospel is fulfilled in your hearing. You were like, what the heck you doing that from, Father? Well, that's exactly what Jesus did today. But uh, since I've been missing you guys for three weeks, I'd like to give a long homily today just to honor John Best Biden. Yes, <laughs> just to honor you, John. <laughs> you know, we are... Uh, Every year at the end of the year, uh, the New York Times would pass a selection of the person of the year, right? To get on the front cover. I don't know how they do that, but uh, there are years that they found the person and you would look and say, man, I don't know who did it, but they got it right. They really good this year. <laughs> and then there's years that you look at that and you say, who the heck would have elect this guy or girls to be? The person of the year. What can that person do? Well, we like the person or we don't like the person because of our personal relationship. If we like the person, it's because that person and us have something in common. That's why we like that person. We say, yeah, you made a good choice this year, buddy. You're good. And if we don't like the person, we say, ah. Man, because we and that person have a lot of things different. Even in this even small community, this family of faith, you know, we're all different. There's certain people we hang around, be more friends and be close with certain people. We meet, we greet, but, you know, we're not very close to them. Certain people say the thing we like, even when the way we have, we grow up. Remember when you grow up, there's certain people you hang around with. If you are uh, redneck, gotta go out there, mm, motorcycle, you, you get along with that group and you hang around. And that's a group of people who go to the mall, go to the city, the hippies, you know, remember that? <laughs> you know? And if you don't like that, you see, man, they look weird. And they will look at you and say, you weird too, bro. That, that's an African-American bro. <laughs> you bro, you look weird. And you know, I remember when I first came here in the early 90s to, the, to uh, this country, remember they got the baggy jean? You remember that? Hey, the jean is three times bigger than they. And they walk every two steps, they got pull up like this and tell it to stand with Did you remember that? I feel like, that's so weird, man. Why don't you just buy a smaller jean? <laughs> and, and did you see that the jeans that have the, what you call that, the cup, right, the knees, and then it costs more. <laughs> I just tell come and see me, I got a lot of old jeans at home being cut right here. But it's not the same. Wow, we look at that and we think it's so weird. We, we're different. Paul talks about that today in the second reading. We're different. But we need to learn how to accept our differences. He said, don't point the finger at the older one apart and say, well, you look funny in the ears. You don't know what you're doing. But he said, we hurt our soul by doing so. I once told you that before I was ordained a priest, you know, when we met with the bishop and the vocation director, you know, and we talked about where would we like to be, right? So I told them, I said, I go anywhere except go to St. Mary's on the hill in Augusta. <laughs> Three weeks later, I get a letter from the bishop. I'm going there. <laughs> and you know, and I didn't pay attention to that. So when it come closer to June the 4th, that's my ordination, I called the pastor there, Father Jerry Reagan. I said, I would like to come down and visit the parish. You know, I heard a lot about that parish. You know, they're all Anglos, they're all white. They've been the generation that grandfather used to be here, and they be, and who are you to come in and do this and do that, you know, all those things? And they say, oh, you wouldn't fit into that. And like wealthy people, you know, that parish, goodly collections, only $83,000, you know, and those kind of things. So I call him up, I said, I would like to come and visit the church. And then the night before I supposed to come down, I call him.
tell him, oh, I cancel it. He said, why are you not you come? And I said, no, no. Because I don't want to come and I decide I don't want to be ordained a priest anymore. I'm done. <laughs> you know, once I first came there, they didn't like me. I didn't like that either. Let's be really honest about that. They never seen an Asian priest. Just like I came from another planet or something like that. I mean, kids come up to me and say, Father, can I touch you? <laughs> and he touched me, he run back to the mom. He said, Mama, he's real. <laughs> Oh, man, I, of course I'm real. We're different. And you know me, the way I talk when I first came here, you know I'm different too. I don't talk the way y'all talk. <laughs> don't try. Don't try. <laughs> and you know, we, we talk differently the way how we explain the gospel. You have from Monsignor, Father, from Monsignor to Father Cliff to Father Robert, and I, Father Isidro, the way how we present it's very different. It's one glory of God. But how do we see it? We different. The way we talk. And even when I was at St. Mary's on the Hill, you know, you know, I have a tendency to talk really fast. And when I talk fast, they couldn't understand me. They told me, Father, you gotta slow down, because we can't understand you. Do you know what I told them? What's your problem, man? Go home and relearn your English. <laughs> I can do mass in Vietnamese, English, Spanish, and Latin. Which language you want me to know? They said, keep your English, Father. We're okay with that. <laughs> but as we grow, we accept that we're different. We came to love one another, and we build up the body of Christ. The day I left there two years after, the pastor said, I got the biggest going away party no priest ever got. Because the people show up. Because they accept Montino is not the same as they are. And I accept them that they're different. But again, like Paul said today, are we all in here for the one body of Christ? That's why we're here. We may be different. We have a background, where we came from, what nationality we are, how do we look? What kind of social condition we grow up? But his brothers are here for one reason. The build up the one body of Christ. And if we're not here, if I am not here, if you are not here for this body of Christ, then we have a problem. We need to heal that problem. If a hand feel hurt, the whole body aches. Even the hair falling, well, I'm not talking about a few people here, but <laughs> if a hair, hair feeling off, the, the face look different. Did you see that I just put my hair all back up now? Uh, I, what did you call that? You, you tied the hair black. <laughs> you know? It doesn't matter what part of the body, it hurts the whole part. So my dear family's member, it's just a coincidence when they come back, look at this beautiful greeting. Those we different, but we here for the body of Christ. So together, you and I, we surely can use our different gifts to build that one body of Christ and make that one body of Christ complete and perfect because we are